Cougs. How's the Houston Cougars looking to start the Willie Fritz era on the right foot? And that includes playing spoiler to this Big 12 team. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, the daily podcast all about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach Parker Ainger, and whether you're a Houston fan or just a hater that came to step by, thank you for making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. Appreciate you making Locked On Cougs your first listen each and every day. Uh, if you want to join the conversation but don't know what to say, Tell us in the comments down below if you are a thick crust or a thin crust pizza person. I can tell you anything else. Thick, thin, I guess I'd call Chicago thick. Maybe if that's a third answer. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. More on that in a moment. But I want to talk to you about, in today's episode, how Willie Fritz's era of Houston Cougars is going to start off, who's going to football, is going to start off with a couple of big surprises throughout the season. And I see at least three really big times in the Big 12 that Houston can play spoiler. That is to say that they can go into some other stadium, someone that expects to be able to beat a rebuilding Houston program, and Houston flips the script. There's a team that they've played relatively recently, uh, as recently as their non-conference slate in the American Athletic Conference, that they could really turn things upside down for. There is a trip out to a new opponent that I think they can beat up as well. But first and foremost, I'm talking about how Houston can play spoiler for the BYU Cougars. Now, this is not just being on the Cougars because they're trying to rightfully claim who the Cougars are, but I want to talk about how Houston can play spoiler in this matchup. Now, Houston heads to BYU on November 30th, last regular season game of the year. The stakes going into that game could be interesting. BYU is really pushing this season to make a bowl game. It's been a very vocal uh, goal for them in that program, going five and seven a year ago. Frankly, the coaching staff is kind of on the hot seat after going five and seven a year ago. It's like, okay, how long they thought they were more Big 12 ready than that and things like that. Frankly, we saw Houston fire their coach after year one in the Big 12. I think they put a lot of people on notice from those new Big 12 expansion schools a year ago. Um, there is a path to spoiling this game that I want to talk through, uh, and it would spoil their season because there's a very real chance that BYU comes into that final game of the regular season at 5 and 6. They have a challenging schedule, not an impossible schedule, and uh, they'll have already played the Holy War uh, game against Utah at that point. They'll have played Kansas, um, They'll play uh, uh, Arizona State the week before. Um, and so they've got like a, a kind of a busy month is what I'm trying to work my way around here before the Houston game. At Arizona State the week before is, um, frankly, kind of a trappy feeling game for BYU because you think of Houston being their big last home game. They think they can win and da-da-da-da-da. Arizona State's a road trip. It's not an easy one. Uh, and while Arizona State's projected to be at the bottom of the conference, we saw last year Houston being on the bottom part of the conference could still win some conference games, right? So Arizona State's going to give them more than they can handle the week before Houston, I'd imagine. I also think that, frankly, uh, BYU probably loses one of those two games, even though they're not supposed to on paper, right? Uh, that makes the other game, again, if they lose to Arizona State the week before, or whatever that makes that game have a lot more pressure on it. Uh, the other thing is BYU's big football advantage is a gigantic home field advantage, right? They play in so, or just south of Salt Lake City in altitude. Uh, it'll be cold in November, etc. But a big part of that home field advantage is going to be that, frankly, it's got a lot of people at a big private institution that like to come out and cheer on a football team, right? That's going to be fairly negated 
when Houston's going to play them. Houston goes to play them again on November 30th. That's the Saturday after Thanksgiving. BYU, as a private school associated with Church, uh, Church of Latter-day Saints, is a very international fan base and school, which means that 48 hours after eating turkey, those folks aren't in Provo. And that will negate, in a large way, a lot of the home field advantage that BYU has. You see this at a lot of uh, smaller private institutions that week after uh, as well. Frankly, with the exception of the big blue bloody programs, uh, unless you have a rivalry game scheduled for that weekend, and Houston and BYU is not that yet, unless you have a rivalry game scheduled for that weekend, it's kind of hard to get kids in your student section to come back to campus for that Saturday or Friday or what have you because they're off seeing their families, wherever that may be, for Thanksgiving, right? And so being the Saturday after Thanksgiving is going to kind of negate a lot of that. I also think, and looking through Houston's schedule here, there's a world where Houston is also five and six. Uh, you know, they can win a couple of those non-conference games, win a couple of the Big 12 games. I think that they should be, uh, at least in Vegas, competitively close in. You can be looking at Houston having some incentive to win this game in terms of extending their season. We talked last season when it was potentially that Houston was going to make a bowl, how that extra month of practice can be such an important thing in establishing the rebuilding of this program. That's going to be a big talking point until it's mathematically impossible, right? Uh, and, and then I looked at what BYU did in terms of defensive things last year and i've been adamant on this podcast i think houston's going to be a much stronger running attack under kevin barbe when a willie fritz likes to have a defensive uh defensive focus football team that's got ball control offense and byu last season on average gave up 177.7 yards on the ground and one and a half touchdowns per game that's 4.9 yards per carry per game in the ground on the ground last season on average. Now I know they'll tell you about XYZ and why NIL deals brought in ABC recruits and da 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 da. But what I will also say is that those numbers are bad. That's bad rushing defense. And Houston is going to be coming in having spent a full season working on their own. Parker Jenkins, Rashawn Sanford, the guys we mentioned the other day and who could in discussing who could replace the Tony Mathis role, those guys will all have found their groove by the end of that season. I think this is creating a gigantic storm when uh, of sorts of all different things. For Houston to come out on top and upset BYU and play, spoiler. Now, again, am I guaranteeing it? No. Am I going to talk myself into winning that game throughout the week leading up to it? Absolutely. I do that every week for what it's worth. But I do think that this is a very winnable game for Houston on paper. For what it's worth, it's also for Houston. Going to come after a stretch of very difficult games between October 4th and November 15th. Houston will go to TCU to Kansas host Utah host Kansas state and to Arizona. That's a handful of ranked teams as well as a very difficult team to play on the road. That was just the national championship game two years ago. Houston, if they can get through that gauntlet, finishes the season with Baylor and this BYU program. That sets up for Houston to be using this to get a good taste on the season, regardless of how that gauntlet of a month in the middle goes. I really think this is a great chance for William Fritz and staff to end the season on a high note, to sell that, and so on. But also, it's a game that BYU is not guaranteed to win, and while they may be a Vegas favorite, it shouldn't be by a whole lot. Now, I want to talk about other ones, including 
one game in that road stretch, that uh, rough stretch we just talked about, where Houston can also play spoiler. But first, we're talking a lot about games today. And if you need tickets to a game or a concert or the theater or a comedy show, anything you need a ticket to, you need to go to game time to get that ticket because it makes it the easiest and most affordable process possible. They got all kinds of last minute priority deals, uh, flash deals, zone deals. And I love that you can toggle it to an all in pricing so you're never surprised by what the final cost will be. I like the seat views. I like the fact that they have 110% refunded back to my account in terms of credit. If I can find a ticket for less somewhere else, they're that confident they got the lowest prices. So make sure you go to Game Time, download the Game Time app today to take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Download the Game Time app today. Create an account and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Turn supply again. Create an account, redeem code locked on college, L O C K E D O N C O L L E G for $20 off. Download Game Time today. The last minute gets the lowest prices, Gare Run Teed. All right, so I mentioned that Houston could end the season by playing spoiler with one BYU. I also mentioned that part of the deal is they have this rough stretch in the middle of the season with a handful of very challenging games on paper, and that upsetting BYU at the end of the season would be kind of a way to get that bad taste out of their mouth. I also think there's a chance that Houston upsets someone in the middle of that, quote, rough stretch, and that someone is Arizona. Houston goes to Arizona on November 15th. That is a Friday if you've got your calendars out. And for what it's worth, if you're like me watching that one on television, it's going to kick off at 9.15 Central Time on a Friday night. So if you're worried about catching Friday Night Lights for your local high school, you will probably still be able to watch most of this game after that high school game is over, ticking off really, really late. Uh, as far as the stakes could be, at that point in the season, again, mid-November, Arizona will probably have their eyes set on getting to Arlington for the Big 12 championship game. Um, they got big games and big goals, uh, both before that and after it. Arizona will have to go to TCU afterwards, and they have their big rivalry game with Arizona State to wrap the season. Uh, and Arizona coming into the Houston game will have likely been the favorite in every game they've played for over six weeks, depending on how things go with one of their opponents six weeks prior. Uh, they'll be have been the favorite in every game for six weeks. And so Arizona's going to be coming off of a series of, for lack of a better phrase, cupcakes, or at least as cupcake kind of schedule as conference games the Big 12 can be, heading into Houston on a, or heading home to host Houston on a Friday night. Now, both programs, I think this works in Houston's favor, are coming off of bye weeks, right? They'll be coming off of bye weeks because uh, the Big 12 done a really good job of if you have a weekday game, a Thursday or a Friday, the week before they give you off or the week after to kind of help so you don't have a short week on either side of that, right? Uh, so both teams will be coming off bye weeks before that Friday, November 15th game. Um, and after that November 15th game, I mentioned that uh, Arizona has to look ahead for at TCU and then hosting Arizona State, right? At TCU is going to be a competitive, difficult game for them. Kind of functions, you know, as a last challenge of the season. You could argue that makes Houston a very trappy feeling game because they could have their eyes set on for two weeks, the bye week and the week leading up to Houston. They could have their eyes set on the next opponent, right? That's very naturally going to happen to college football teams as college kids, right? The other thing is they will end their season with a big rival game, Arizona. Arizona, Arizona will be playing Arizona State uh, at the end of that. That could also set up a fairly trap gamey kind of feel in this Houston and Arizona game. The fact that it's Friday is not lost to me. I think that adds to the things that help Houston. Weekday games play out weirdly. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know what it is about college football, but games played on Thursdays, Fridays, uh, Maction on a Tuesday, whatever the case may be, 
college football games on weekdays tend to play out kind of weirdly. Think about the ending of Houston versus West Virginia on a Thursday last season, right? Uh, Houston's had control of the game. That green kid goes down and scores and starts celebrating way too early on a big touchdown pass. Houston comes back and wins on a walk-off bomb of their own. I mean, that's the kind of weirdness we're talking about here. That, I think, the chaos in this game for Houston being what I would assume is a Vegas underdog in this. We'll check with Fandle, obviously, leading into the game that week. That weirdness only stands to help them, right? Weirdness will always hurt the favorites. That will always help in this instance, at Houston, help the underdog, right? Um, last season, Arizona gave up three and a half yards rushing per carry and a touchdown and a half per game. That was in the Pac-12, not a big running conference. Uh, I don't think that's going to do that, that. That kind of a defense is going to do very well in the Big 12. Now, to be fair, uh, they did change coaches uh the new coach had a rough start in 2023 and a bad season in 2021 at san jose state he finished the season strong last year and earned this job obviously i don't mean to say that he's not um he's not capable of turning the arizona program into a contender or anything like that but i do think that's worth mentioning that he's got some holes in his resume. He's certainly not like a Nick Saban, right? Like this is not like a coach I would be scared of by any stretch. Their quarterback, Noah Fifta, uh, is very, very one-dimensional, right? He has got negative career rushing yards. This is not a rushing threat. Uh, for what it's worth, as a full-time, turning into a full-time starter last season, he went 7-2 and two as a starter and had 2,800 yards passing 25 touchdowns and six interceptions. So decent numbers across the board, especially with Vectran, he didn't start or play in a handful of games. But truthfully, being one-dimensional will also help a Willie Fritz-led defense to find ways to attack him. We talked about Keith Cooper, uh, Brandon Mack, the way that defensive front's going to get after the quarterback in terms of pass rushing and things like that. Uh, a less than mobile quarterback back there that takes a lot of sacks listed at 511 a buck 95 uh so he's not like a giant or anything they're they're going to get after him and that also makes these weird weekday games get even weirder right pass rushing can make up for a lot of things I think Houston's going to have some opportunities to win some pass rushing battles in that Arizona game. And while Vegas will probably not favor, oh, there goes my pen, will probably not favor the Cougs, I do think that there's a path to victory there that plays out on paper for a number of reasons. And ultimately, uh, like I said, I'm going to talk myself into Houston winning every single week. Um, but honestly, I think that this Arizona one could be a big time. Uh, a, re, a very real possibility. And that's a ranked Arizona team. I know they're very good. Uh, I, I just think there are things in this that work in Houston's favor at a macro level. As we get closer to the games, obviously we get to more of a micro level. But before we do any of that, Houston goes to what is technically defined as a road game, but could potentially play out more like a neutral site game and ultimately lead to another chance for Houston to play a big time spoiler, but first, all right. So today we've talk been talking about all these different chances Houston has to spoil the pooch, to upset Vegas, to upset a fan base, and to ruin a football season potentially. Um, frankly, for its worth, we open with BYU because it's a very likely periphery of the Bulls kind of contender. Houston getting to play them would be a big deal, right? Houston getting that one up. Arizona's kind of the one game in this rough stretch of games in the middle of Houston season that I see them having a chance to really pull off an upset. But I want to talk in the third and final segment about what would probably end up being one of the bigger upsets on the schedule if possible, certainly in the Big 12 schedule, if they could pull it off, and I think there's a chance they do, and that's beating Kansas in Kansas, kind of. 
A big part of this is that Kansas will not be playing traditional home games in 2024. Uh, for instance, Houston would be playing them at Arrowhead Stadium located in Kansas City, which is notably a different city than Lawrence, Kansas. And that will, I think, play in Houston's favor. Now, the stakes of this game are clear. Kansas is a media darling thus far. Lance Leopold, their coach, it was a Division Three coaching legend that got to Kansas and has quickly turned that program around. And we're going to hear, end up hearing his name rumored to every big-time job across the entire country, every blue blood type of job across the entire country, that is, for the foreseeable future until he adamantly and outright denies it. And even then, I think you'll probably still hear about it for a little bit, right? Um, this is a big season for him if he ever wanted to make that jump because it kind of has a team full of his guys and his culture's been established there. Right. Um, I'm not going to be around the bush with you. Jalen Daniels is kind of considered an outside shot at the Heisman kind of guy. He's got that kind of a season potentially underway here. We'll see how things go. But I think people are excited to see what he does in the Big 12 now that he is healthy. The way Houston wins this game with all those things on the line is that, again, this is not a true home game for Kansas. It will just be their second game played next season in Arrowhead when Houston pulls up to town. Before that, they'll have played in Kansas City at Children's Mercy Park. They'll have played road games in Champaign, Illinois, Morgantown, West Virginia, and Tempe, Arizona. And then, like I said, they'll have the one other uh, game against a TCU at, Air at Arrowhead as well. So just their second game at the stadium, it's not exactly next door to the university of, to Kansas University there in Lawrence. And so I do think that's going to make it hard for like fans to just get up and go travel. And frankly, at this point, the Vegas spread would be kind of large for Kansas. I feel like that's going to lead to less fans from Kansas getting up and making the trip across, right? Um, the week before... Kansas, uh, Houston, and Kansas both have a, a, a bye week. Uh, again, I mentioned before, I think those kinds of things actually help Houston out in this because these other teams have like bigger bulletin board things to play for. Houston's very much a opponent-to-opponent, week-to-week kind of team this year because we're rebuilding the program. Kansas is further along in that process, right? And as Kansas is further along in that process, the week after, after Houston, they had to Kansas State to play a big-time rivalry game on the road against one of the best teams in the conference and certainly the best team as it's presently ranked on the Kansas schedule, right? It would be very natural for the team to look past Houston in a sense turning it into another type of trap game in mid-October, right? Now, Houston played Kansas a few years back. Very different Houston team, very different Kansas team. But you'll remember even Dana squad had a little bit of a lead before like a crazy lightning delay, I believe is what it was, um, back in 2022. Lots of people have turned over, lots of people have come and gone. But I do think that Kansas, while they've had some good games and a couple of good seasons, is still further behind in the rebuilding process than like the national media might make them out to be. Um, that's a personal opinion that I should probably stress. That's just what I've seen of watching them play football for a couple of years now. Last season, uh, Kansas gave 161 yards and two touchdowns per game on the ground. Houston, as we mentioned, will be exploiting those kinds of weaknesses this season. Two touchdowns per game on the ground on average is a bad sign for Kansas in this game because I imagine Houston's going to do everything they can to be on the positive side of that if they would in every game, but to really waste a lot of clock and keep the ball out of Jalen Daniels' hands, which leads me to Jalen Daniels. I hate 
to discuss injuries in any sort of a hypothetical sense because I don't want to come across as if I'm rooting for an injury. And so I, I, I'm not. I don't want Jalen Jay, Daniels to get hurt. I want Houston to play them at full strength and beat them at full strength. I will say quarterbacks and back injuries worry me. He played just three games in all of 2023. And when he was slotted to come back from his back injury, he actually re-aggravated it in the warm-ups of the game against UT Austin last year, right? So uh, he's clear to play. There's no medical reason to think he will not be playing. Um, but I do think that quarterbacks twisting, running, throwing on the run, back injuries have a way of coming back up. It would not be crazy outlandish for this to be a game that he is hampered, hurt, or otherwise. And while I would not want that to be the case, that, plus Houston playing well and winning, would absolutely spoil and ru ruin a season for a Kansas team that is spending the preseason ranked for the first time in a long time with the highest candidate for the first time in a long time and one of the hottest names in coaching for the first time in a long time. Now, I think Houston can play spoiler there if he's healthy as well. Again, coming off of a bye week, functionally a trap game. They have a pretty bad run defense, relatively speaking, yada, yada, yada. But I didn't want to look past that as a potential reason for Houston to ultimately uh, you know, gain and continue to gain advantages. Now, I think Houston wins more than three games this year. So I don't mean to say these are the only three games that they can win by any stretch, but in looking at their Big 12 conference games, I stress, in looking at their Big 12 conference games, I do think BYU, Arizona, and Kansas will be big-time Vegas favorites that Houston can flip the script on, right? And frankly, when they hit some of these guys in the mouth with this running attack, I don't know that they're going to be ready for what's coming, right? Now, that's just one podcaster's opinion. If you think I'm wrong, you think I'm right, you think I'm missing a game, you think there are other games in the Big 12 specifically that Houston can play spoiler for, Tell me in the comments down below or find me on X, or whatever social media service you prefer at Painsworth 512, P-A-I-N-S-W-O-R-T-H 512 on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Blue Sky, all of the accounts. I'm Painsworth 512. Thank you so much for being locked on Cooks, your first listen of the day. If the very second listen of the day. I'm going to recommend Locked On Big 12 as Drake told you a great job of getting everyone ready for another season of very fun, exciting, uh, weird, big 12 football. Thanks so much for being Locked On Cougar versus Locked On Cougar. So proud of the Locked On Podcast Network. That means your team every day. Go Cougs.